Hi, Kishan. Welcome to the program. Maybe we could uh, start off uh, telling us about your journey uh, so far, because we can see that you have you are founder of HBOTS Robotics and CEO of NV Robotics. So you have done a lot of work in that area. So how you started off, and um, uh, what were the challenge, initial challenges you had when you started your enterprise? So thank you, thank you for having me here today. Um, so it's almost 18 years of journey. So I started my first startup when I was in my graduation second year in the same robotics. And um, so it, it was like uh, robotics was the future uh, back then in 2007. And I've been hearing it's the future, it's the future. Thank God at least today, uh, India Today has invited me here to talk about robotics manufacturing in India today. So um, finally we are here. But yeah, so the first, uh, uh, when I stepped into robotics, it was always, uh, uh, I, I was born to do something in robotics. So there's no fancy stuff like that. So it was very simple. Uh, I used to run an organization, orphanage. So I need funds to uh, maintain that orphanage. And one easiest way for me to get and learn something and get into it was robotics at that time. And I started learning robotics in Vellore Institute uh, of Technology. And then I started my first edutech in robotics. And then we started working on PCB manufacturing. And by the time I finished my graduation, I had almost around 350 employees. Um, and I went to my own college for placements. And um, everything was very colorful, et cetera, and all. And in 2012, uh, I think we again had one of the biggest failures. And uh, because there was no ecosystem of robotics. And then again, 2014, we again started, restarted my journey. Then we built something called agriculture robots. And it, it, it's on. So it's always like success and failure. So if, if one year is success even and odd, so we've been following the same in success and failures. Okay. Policies, you know, do play a very vital role in, in creating the kind of ecosystem that you need to create. Um, you have been a very integral part of... Uh, uh, the Telangana robotics framework. Could you tell us a little bit about that and what are the kind of inputs that went to it and what are some of the suggestions of the policy? Yeah, so I'll, I'll also just uh, talk about a small story before I go there. Uh, so my uh, fourth startup was Hedgebots Robotics. So I started this in 2017. Um, so till then we've been doing a lot of work in edutech and then PCB manufacturing, etc. So one day I happened to visit uh, an event in Singapore and there was a beautiful uh, semi-humanoid robot standing there and uh, wanted to just touch and feel it obviously as an uh, youngster. And um, we were slightly humiliated there. So uh, then we decided why can't we make a robot in India? And then we came back uh, and then we announced something called India's first smart policing robot. So in 2017. And um, uh, so uh, Jay Shanjangar, so one of the uh, principal secretary of IT. So he was the one who was there, a part of that uh, media delegation again. So we announced, and while we're announcing as a youngster again, we get a lot of excitement. So one more other uh, word or tem terminology I used is like we make the entire robot made in India. So we don't import any uh, components from China because I was raised and born and raised in an era of um, there are only two uh, villains in, for you. So one is Pakistan, one is China. Uh, for, that was what we taught in our school days. Right? Um, so that, that's where we grew up. So we thought we should not use any components from China. And uh, fortunately, we manufactured. So 99% of the entire robot is made in India. And we launched it. We successfully did it. And um, the day we launched it, it, was, it went viral. And we were about to receive some funding. But the funders backed off because they want the Made in India tag to be removed and which we denied and we removed that made in India tag from backside and had it in front of our robot. So still our products goes with made in India tag in front of the robot. So all, so, so uh, on, the, on that day really we lost uh, 200 robot orders from Malaysia, but we were very happy because at least we did something. But one thing I realized is patriotism and business cannot be together. And uh, that's what uh, really uh, making me falls in troubles from last 18 years. Um, so once we launched this robot and we got a lot of recognition from Western countries, and then we started selling our products there. And 
back in India in 2020, we know what happened again. COVID came. And uh, during COVID, we designed a product called Disinfection Robot. And every outside disinfection robot was around 50 lakh, and we designed a product with around three and a half lakh. And that was the biggest uh, uh, achievement. Uh, and then, yeah, we didn't sell any product, uh, but we given a space in Robotics Museum in Gujarat, in, in Ahmedabad. So at least we thought even the product is not making outside in the market, at least it is there in the museum. So in all this story, what we realized is we made different products, we made good products, we made better products, but we never made money. We spent a lot of money in making these products, but we never made money. So that's when uh, I realized there's no proper trade body, no association, nothing. So then, then IT minister of Telangana, so then I went to him, I proposed him an idea called, let's start something called All India Robotics Association. Then we started All India Robotics Association in 2020, December 15th. And the moment we launched, we started getting a lot of requests from the industry body that I had this problem, I have this problem, my components are not coming. Because you took voluntarily as a big brother role. Then when we started talking to the governments, uh, then we realized it's not about having association, it's not about having industries, it's not about having clients. There is one biggest brother out of all this, which is policy. If there's no policy in the government, there's no need of doing anything. So it is learning the hard way, you yes. know? Yeah, and you went on a uh, policy of backward integration. Like. Backward I mean, you integration. yourself found out what is missing True. and tried to fill the gaps. True. We so tell us about the policy. Uh, so first we went to government of Telangana. We said, so we need a policy. And um, I, I was so back of them almost for like seven and a half, eight months. And then finally, to make me not come to secretariat again, they accepted, okay, let's make a policy. And then we started designing the policy and three important uh, segments we focused is one, industry academia. I mean, we want an education to be uh, uh, parallelly grown in robotics and then there should be a research and development. There should be some incentives from the government. Without incentives, there's no startup can do anything because the central incentives are different, the local incentives are different. So we focused on the, uh, these three. And again, on the robotics as well. So before the, I mean, before COVID, if you look at the trends of, uh, in robotics, everyone used to come up with a different product. But again, the reality, whether the market needs or not, is slight different. So then we started gathering all the information and we made sure that Telangana can focus on consumer robotics, healthcare, defense, and security. So these are the four industrial automation. So these are the five important segments we created. And similarly, we did for national strategy on robotics for MITE and then for Kerala Robotics, uh, I mean Kerala State, and now we are doing it for Goa and Tamil Nadu as well. So with those policies in place, you think that today we have a better framework? Uh, uh, yeah, the framework is good. Again, it is also important that the um, implementation also plays a key vital role. Uh, Kerala is doing really good, Telangana is doing good. Um, but again, there, again, there's a gap again. See, even though we have policies, so the policy will only talk about giving you certain incentives. Policies will only talk you about first customer. So Telangana has a policy that if you make a robot, Telangana government would be the first customer, but doesn't give you the hen, um, and full money to scale your product again, right? Um, and the biggest challenge I see startups, even as a startup, so still I'm continuing my startup journey, is importing of components. So. We've been trained in such a way that focus on end product. So my question to all the youngsters over here, don't focus on product, focus on components which will build that product. So that is what India needs today. So it's not that uh, the robot, robot making, it's all like assembling all the available components. So why can't we focus on making those components is my strike question and which we are still focusing on. So that brings us, you know, to the, some of the challenges that, um, uh, are presently there. I mean, our robo density is supposed to be, you know, very low, I mean, compared to several other countries. Um, so what is holding us back? So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm only talking about my perception over, definitely. Um, so one thing I strongly believe is uh, Y2K, if you're talking about the previous histories, so Y2K bug has given us an accidental uh, opportunity for India to grow in software segment. 
um, while we concentrated because when the Y2K bug happened, so we need, I mean, the world needs a lot of workforce and India was alternative and they came here and we started supporting them. And while this is happening, there were a lot of developers who started developing software products in the country and that's how we raised in software. And similarly to happen in robotics, that magical moment have never come yet. Right? And uh, one important thing which is getting hold us back is robotics needs a lot of research R&D. And we don't have any premium research institutes which is focusing more on the subsystems or components of those particular robots. We always talk about surveillance robot. We always talk about agriculture. We always talk about defense. We always talk about something. Even I talk about it. My startup also works on different various products. So we always focused only on that because industry or the society made us to focus only on that. If I would have focused my, all my 18 years uh, in making nice motors for robots or nice electronic chips for motors, I think today we would have been in a different stage. I think that's something which needs to be developed. It's my perception if I'm sorry if it's against. No, you're, you're very right. I mean, R&D is, is it's a very, very important point and uh, developing the right ecosystem also means developing the right education policies, the curriculum around it. And uh, this came up even in our discussion earlier. You know, in fact, the, the minister also, you know, pointed mm -hmm. to some of the things that they are planning. And um, in fact, they are planning a AI uh, hub, True. you know, totally where you'll, they will house only companies which are, uh, which are into AI. And, and these are the kind of things that, they are, that are being done. Um, what about the import components? Is it, is it that, you know, we still have to depend quite heavily on the Chinese or be out of that? So definitely we have to depend on Chinese. There's no doubt about it. Um, <clears throat> earlier, I mean, when I started my career or uh, at least for the last, uh, uh, I mean, before 2020, my, my perception was always on like, we, n we should not import anything from China. We have to make it in India, etc. But that's not that easy is what I realized. It's, it's gonna take at least one or two decades and they have to be one entire generation which needs to be sacrificed. And I don't think so, no one will sacrifice the entire generation. So while developing a little and building a little, so I think it's gonna take at least two, one decade more to have the entire ecosystem of robotics in India. And depending on China, at least on the major components, we have to depend. The reason is uh, here in India, if I have to go and get manufactured a smaller quantity, which is impossible. So if I go to China, at least that's happening. And we've been also seen, I mean, I've seen two sides of China. So the first side of China, which I've seen in my childhood was, there used to be a bazaar called China Bazaar, where you get all, all inventory for 10 rupees, five rupees. So the cheapest side of China. But recently, when I started closely looking at China, so we've seen a lot of premium segment of China. So there are a lot of robots, components coming from China. So we need to depend, which is definitely need to accept. Uh, before we let you go, and I just wanted to understand from you some of the work you're doing on the, the space robotics part. In fact, you were telling me your preparations to launch a robotic factory in space so that you can collect uh, debris from space. I mean, that looks uh, extraordinarily exciting. Uh, so could you please tell us something about that? Um, it, it's very simple. So as I said, like, Fortunately or unfortunately, whatever I've done or whatever we have done till date was always uh, early in the market. And in, in the robotics, if you have to measure something, so space robotics is the last and the longest and the largest uh, subject ever inside robotics. So there is no premature for that and there is no early in the market. So we thought, why can't we focus on it? Uh, on it, it was more on a funny side. but. Uh, on a serious note, so we are trying to build a space robotics factory in space. Uh, it's a virtual space factory, which we call it as Galactica. Uh, Anvi is a startup name. So Anvi's Galactica is a product name. And it's a module, uh, module-based um, ecosystem which we are trying to build in space. So we have next one decade plan. So next year we are launching our first module. So removal of space debris 
and then manufacturing in space, assembling in space with all the advanced robotic systems and robotic arms is something which we are trying to build. So definitely next year, we'll, we are hoping that our first mission will get successful and we'll put India on the global map for sure in the space robotics. Okay, excellent. Uh, so with that note, I mean, all the best to you. A big round of applause Thank you. to Mr. Kishan for... So, uh, I just close one. Uh, so I think everyone are watching Instagram, everyone uses, even I use. So we watch Reels, right? So I just finished this with one line. Uh, nowadays, we see a lot of reels saying that China has developed this, China has developed that. At least by the next India Today's robotics conclave next year or next year later, we want that to be replaced with India is making these robots, India is making these robots, India is making these advancements. So let's all grow for that and let's all aim for that. Thank you. A big round of applause for that. Thank you so much, Kishan.